how do we discover our destiny and how do we step into this new earth? Your own individual journey is your greatest contribution to your beloved human family. There is a wanting to create more of which you already are, more abundance, more peace, more joy, more love. When you really give yourself permission to be who you are, anything is possible. This is the time of the greatest transformation of human consciousness that will ever occur in any lifetime. Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever wanted to discover your destiny and divine purpose, then do we have the Wisdom of the Council show for you. Today I'll be talking with Sarah Landon, transformational leader, teacher, channeler of the Council, and the author of a beautiful new book, The Wisdom of the Council. And that's just what I want to talk with her about today, about how to discover your destiny and hop on your divine plan. So welcome to the show, Sarah. Are you ready to shine? Hi, Michael. I am so happy to be here with you and the Inspire Nation community. Thank you for having me. And I'm looking forward to an amazing conversation with you today. Well, a mighty woohoo. And and in a few minutes, we'll even go into law of attraction versus highest good and the or something better and how you came in here. But before we do that, why do we feel so off track today? (laughs) today gosh i have to say i think it's just about shifting into that what brings you joy in your life and what do you love and just remembering that that is the the life force the energy the inspiration for all of us each day and so anytime somebody feels a little overwhelmed or off kilter or not quite in that place just take a couple of moments the council says take three deep breaths and just go from your head into your heart. And you will notice the second you go from your head, just just even with your eyes open or your eyes closed, if you take three deep breaths, go from your head into your heart, there's almost this instant knowing that all is well. And I think that's so powerful. From there, we can then focus on what brings us joy and what we love, but I think that's always the first step. Thank you. So before we dive into things and before we have a channeling here today, who are, and I'm not sure if I'm going to pronounce it right, Aunt Sunny and Mufu, and what do they have to do with everything? Really good question. You've obviously read my book, Michael. (laughs) My beloved Aunt Sunny uh, was on a very spiritual path uh, in the 70s and 80s. She had had a near-death experience car accident and found herself unable to do anything except sit and watch this television show. And there was a man on there talking about soulmates. And she said, I just instantly resonated He was doing a local event, so she went and watched, and that was kind of the beginning of her spiritual path. She uh, then discovered a woman who channeled a being called Mafu. And I have to tell you, Michael, I was raised in a very, uh, very loving uh, Christian family, and these types of things weren't common nor discussed. I don't even think there was an awareness. The only real understanding was Christianity and Jesus as the Savior. So when my Aunt Sunny came back with all of these incredible spiritual teachings, she was so excited about explaining they came from a entity who channeled through a woman. <laughs> uh, she, she met with a little bit of resistance. Let's just call it that. Yeah, they said she was going to hell. <laughs> well, and that, that I was too, if uh, I believe that stuff. And, you know, I have to say, though, on this journey for myself and watching humanity as a whole, that including my family and friends and community, I see them uh, awakening to their own inner truth and still having a relationship with 
Jesus or or uh, it being part of an organized religion, but from a much more awakened place, and certainly one that has transitioned from love from fear to love. Uh, regardless of whether we have these same beliefs or not. It is possible for all of us to accept each other, to listen and understand uh, and, and do so with love, no matter whether our family has the same beliefs as we do or not. It, it's interesting. I have no intention of going there today and I'm listening and the, the guys are laughing. But but with that said, and and I've been in organized Judaism, I've been in organized Christianity, i belonged at one point to a, uh, a, a born-again um, strict interpretation of the Bible church. I like to believe, and, and, and they had the belief, you know, we went to the men's group, we were told, you know, as you mentioned in the book, if there's an indigenous people who haven't been introduced to Jesus, oh, well, they're going to hell. I believe that even people who have taught that in the past are starting to open up, that there is a shift, the door is open, and the foot is in there, and that door can't close anymore, that we are all shifting into a greater place of love now. I couldn't agree with you more, Michael. I couldn't agree with you more. I see it everywhere in, in all areas, and if we're, if we're really looking through the eyes of love, it's easy to see. And if you go back to what those teachings are in general, it really is about love God as thyself. It is about directing you to a relationship with source, with God, with the divine. And everything that the council brings through is also that same message, guiding you to that relationship to source. Well, that is to me, and we have a school of mystics, that is mysticism. Mysticism, it can be uh, Christian mysticism, Judaic mysticism. It can be what I like to call, the, you know, the giant cheeseburger in the sky mysticism. At the top, if we picture it as a pyramid, at the top of any religion is the truth. We are all one. All there is, is love. Yes. Yes. Absolute truth. You're growing up in a household that, well, that they, thank God you had Aunt Sunny because uh, she helps you understand that you can be crazy and that this stuff is real and someday there will be an unfolding for you. That day came about for you with kind of a two by four on a November day in 2001. What happened? Uh, well, I, just to, to further expand a bit on that journey with Aunt Sunny, the, the first time I was exposed to these teachings, I just knew it was absolute truth. I knew it. This, this light ignited in me, and I just knew it was truth. And it didn't matter how the truth came uh, through. I just There was such a deep resonance with it. And I have to say, both of my parents, my mother and my father, really lived this stuff even if they don't know uh, that they they would speak about it in that same way. They are both very much involved in being your best self and being positive and, and positively contributing. And so you can see that people live this in your life, even if they don't speak the same spiritual language that we do. But yes, I I got into spirituality and personal development at a very young age, had these aspirations to really explore what was possible for us. And uh, so at a very young age, I got into the corporate world and I was doing what I thought you're supposed to do to be successful. You know, you go to school, you get the great job, you work hard, uh, you buy stuff, you get a house, you get a car, you know, you do those things. And, and I had a moment in my life that while at the time seemed like the worst thing that could possibly happen, uh, really was, I believe, the catalyst to my awakening and to this path for my life. And it was a phone call from my mother saying that my brother had transitioned instantly in a car crash. And I flew to where he was at that time. I was living in Seattle. He was in Alaska. My family all went up there. We were going in as a family to his viewing. And I walked into a very cold, uh, it was a November day in Alaska, very, very cold, but very heavy, very emotional room where my brother's body was. And it was the first time I'd seen a dead body. It's the first time I had touched a dead body. I was shocked how cold it was. 
And I stood there for a moment and then I went and sat down and my family was sitting there. We were all just kind of processing what we were experiencing. And after a few minutes, I don't know exactly how long I sat there, but all of a sudden I felt what I can only describe as liquid love start from the top of my head and it would just, it was pouring down through my head, into my shoulders, down into my heart, all the way down. I could feel it in my feet. My whole body was warm and I was in complete and total peace. And I heard as clear as day over my right shoulder, my brother say, I'm still here. I'm just not in there. And I knew that in there he was referencing his body, which was on the left side. I heard him over my right shoulder. And in my head, I said back, well, where are you? And he said, well, I'm just as here as I ever was. I just left the density of the body and I'm out of frequency that your physical senses can't interpret, but no one ever goes anywhere. And this went on for a couple of moments and then it receded. And I was back in this room looking around, realizing I'm the only one who had just had this experience. But it, that moment changed my entire life. I was in the corporate world uh, trying to live this seemingly normal life. And yet all I wanted was to reconnect with that energy and that love and that feeling uh, to communicate with my brother. And it continued on spontaneously for years. And, um, you know, every time that same feeling, that same love, He's, uh, he was, he was quite comical at times. I'd be in an elevator and <laughs> this was in my Ask corporate this life. Person and the name. Be, Ask yeah. them their name. <laughs> Over my right shoulder, right? Ask this person their name. And I'm like, no way. I am not asking them their name. And so I would say, hi, my name is Sarah. What's your name? And I knew what they were going to say. And they would always say, oh, hi, my name is Tim. Or I would be in a restaurant and the waiter was about to walk to the table and I would just know that their name was going to be Tim. And I would also have incredible meditations where he would come through and I could see his beautiful blue eyes and, and the love that existed was far beyond uh, anything I had ever really felt in the human experienced uh, until at, at that time. So it was, it was amazing. Beautiful. So I want to take it one step further and we're going to go, everybody, we're going to go into communicating with the council and understanding your divine purpose and path. We're, we're diving in there. You discovered your oxygen. However, and I'm thinking of my path with automatic writing, the oxygen came with kind of a warning label of insanity on it. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to do what? I'm going to speak with whom? So in QHHT, counsel starts to come through in this hypnotherapy session. This, this counsel starts to come through. What is going on for you? How did it shift? And, and I'm really curious because a lot of people in our audience are having these experiences. How much of a um, argument was there between you and what's going on? I argued for years with the angels and guys. You want me to write a book about what? <laughs> That's not my shtick. You got the wrong guy. <laughs> yes. I often say if anybody would have told my, me in my former corporate life that I was going to be sitting in on a camera interviewing a group of non-physical beings called the council. I, uh, I, I would have said you've got the wrong person for sure. Um, as my path, uh, went on, I, I did experience automatic writing, although I didn't know what that was called at the time. And, and I think it's important to note it. I, I had studied personal development from a very young age. I had been exposed to Christianity and I just had this question that no one could ever answer for me. And it was this, what is our highest potential? I want to know what my highest potential is. And so uh, on a spiritual path, I would get these answers like sit and get quiet. And, and that wasn't really working for me <laughs> at that time. And then you have someone over here, you saying, you know, take massive determined action or, or you can manifest in the law of attraction. And 
I had manifested all those things that I thought I wanted and it still didn't leave me with a sense of purpose and meaning and fulfillment that I thought it would. And so I had these questions. I also remember Christianity saying, with God, all things are possible. And I really wanted to know, like, what? Like, what's possible for us? So I was really asking. And I think for many people, you have to acknowledge your part in this experience is that you're asking, you're asking these questions and you are drawing to you the awareness and the consciousness to allow you to receive the answers to what you are asking. And so it, it was a divinely orchestrated experience. I met this woman who became a dear friend who did QHHT and I asked her, well, what is that? And she said, I help people get in touch with their soul. And so I said, well, let's do that for sure. <laughs> and I had a lot of questions. She asked me to write down my questions. And so QHHT is an incredible process. Uh, many people I know have had uh, wonderful experiences connecting to their angels and their guides and higher self. Yes, through QHHT. It's amazing. And I never, ever would have imagined that as we went through that process, all of a sudden, an energy came through, even beyond what I had ever, ever experienced before, the most loving, intense, powerful energy just started coming through me. And my voice changed, the cadence of my voice changed, I started to talk very differently, and they went on to answer the questions that she was asking them. And when, when we were complete, I remember just going, oh my gosh, I don't know what that was. And that was so strange and weird. And yet I knew, I knew those were the answers I was looking for. And I never, ever, ever could have imagined. Uh, I just kept following what was choiceless for me, which was I wanted to do another session with her and I wanted to bring that energy back in. And we got more questions. And so we continued to do this for several months. Again, I had no aspiration of being public with it but the wisdom that was coming through was completely transforming my life, opening my heart, awakening me to such another level of what's possible. I started sharing it with a few close friends and watched their lives begin to change and transform. And I just couldn't keep all of this wisdom. It was just this I, I have to share this with the world. I have to, no matter what my biggest fear is, no matter how much I want to be normal and not perceived as weird or woo-woo, I can't not do this. And I've had my journey. I, I share it very openly uh, in our courses and in my master's class community. And, you know, the, the journey with my family and my, my corporate friends and family, ultimately, I would say to anyone when you really give yourself permission to be who you are and you stand in your power and you shine your light and you come from love, anything is possible, which means those people you never can imagine will awaken and be open and accepting of this will meet you with an open heart just, just as you are being all that you are. So I know there's a lot of people on this journey. I have taken over 4,000 people around the world through this experience of learning how to channel themselves. Mike Dooley, who you know really well, and I did a course called The Art of Channeling. And if you are drawn to channeling, which you would not even be here listening to this or part of this community if you didn't know there was infinite intelligence and guides and a higher self and spirit and, and you know this consciousness that was available to you. So you wouldn't be drawn to this if you yourself didn't have your own connection to source. And sometimes it's just remembering how to open up to that. And athletes, professional athletes, uh, um, musicians, singers, so many people I know have had that experience where you're maybe having lunch with a friend and all of a sudden you just say something and these words come through you and, and they say, oh my gosh, or they're crying and you're, you're like, I don't know where that came from. All of you have tuned into this at some point of your life. Now we're in a place where we can do it consciously and intentionally. Thank you. Thank you. So on that note, would you mind if we call in the council and with permission, I'm going to ask them some questions here today. 
Absolutely. It would be my great joy. Um, as I have you know, channeled uh, countless hours over the past 10 plus years, you know, this really has become so much more integrated for me. It's easier to get into channel and get out uh, and and channel for longer periods of time. But you'll notice my eyes are closed. Uh, the cadence of my voice does still change just a little bit. I really encourage people, if it feels good to you and you're a place that you can do so, to also just close your eyes and feel for the vibration, feel for the awareness that's coming through and just allow yourself to have this experience. So they'll start with a brief message for us, Michael, and then they'll go to your questions and you can talk to them about absolutely anything. And then when you're ready, uh, they will, they will say goodbye to you and, and then we can come back. So it just takes me about three deep breaths. So I encourage you to do the same and we'll bring in the council. Last question before you do that. How tired do you get doing it? Cause I want to respect your energy. Oh, I really don't. Uh, for many, many years, I channeled about six hours a day. Um, I still channel most every day, and um, I have done it for several hours at a time. So it's really, the, it, my body has acclimated this vibration over the years, and it, it's just a part of who I am, really. And to me, it's just very, very, very uplifting. So we can go as long as you wish. Thank you. We are so pleased and delighted to have the opportunity to speak with you on this fine and glorious day, our dear, beloved friend. And we tell you that while our words to you are important, this is a vibrational experience of remembering the truth of who you really are and why you are here and all that you intended when you chose this magnificent life experience because we assure you, your life is meant to be so very good for you. Where would you like to begin, our friend? I would like to begin with, does our so much is going on in the world today? I'm curious why all of this is taking place and does each of our own individual journeys still matter? Oh, your own individual journey is your greatest contribution to your beloved human family. You are here as creator within your own creation of reality. And what exists within you is what you are creating in the world around you and what you are contributing. So as you fully awaken to who you are, as you come into the realization of every part of you, into your own wholeness and completeness and worthiness, that is what you are contributing to the world. If you want freedom for your beloved human family, yet you hold yourself in bondage with your own thoughts and ways of thinking, you are just contributing to the lack of freedom that you so desire for yourself and everyone you love. You are here to step into a state of consciousness and live in a state of consciousness that we would refer to as heaven on earth, a new earth, your own personal paradise. As each of you do this through the elevation of your consciousness and your awareness, you raise the vibration and you raise the frequency. And most all of you who are drawn to this feel a greater service to positively contribute to the raising of the vibration and the consciousness. You have the same dream in your heart, peace, joy, love, abundance, well-being, freedom for all. You must create it for yourself. And in doing so, you will expand the potentials and the possibilities for all of humankind to fully awaken and go through transformation into realization so that they too can remember that they have the power to create the world within them that they most want to experience in the world around them. This is truly mastery. You are here to master your life experience. There is nothing that you desire 
or dream of or envision that is not possible for you. Only you can give away your freedom. Only you can deny love for yourself. Only you can deny that you are worthy of that which you most desire to create in your experience. Do you understand? Yes, thank you. So some follow-up questions. How do we discover our destiny and how do we step into this new earth? So first we want to give you the formula as we refer to it to creation. Consciousness is what moves energy into form. So what you are doing, our friend, is contributing to raising awareness and raising consciousness. Anytime someone raises their consciousness, and we are happy to discuss the different levels of consciousness with you, they begin to summon energy that they had previously resisted or had been constricting to now open and allow and summon new levels of energy through their new levels of consciousness. That energy moves into form as creation. And we speak of true creation, where there is no lack and limitation and struggle and suffering in your desires. There is a wanting to create more of which you already are. More abundance, more peace, more joy, more love. So you ask about destiny. When you are in a place of saying, I don't know what my purpose is, or I'm stuck, or I don't know what I should be doing. And we would say, what do you really want? To be inspired, to be passionate, to, to do what you love, to do the things that bring you joy, because that is your purpose. Your purpose is to live fully, to love fully, to be all that you are, to do the things that bring you joy and to do the things you love. All of that will positively contribute to the potentials and possibilities for all of humankind. The fifth dimension, as we refer to it, is that state of heaven on earth. We refer to it as a state of consciousness of pure love. From this state of consciousness, a whole new world opens up to you. And so much more is possible for you because of the level of consciousness you're in and because of the level of energy you are now summoning into physical form. Your well-being and your abundance from this state of consciousness is assured. And you will know what it's like to live forevermore beyond lack, limitation, fear, and separation. You will see this human experience and your beloved human family from a much grander perspective of what's really going on here. And as you do this, every time you do this, you are making it easier and easier and easier for others to step into this state of consciousness of heaven on earth for themselves. You're here to fully realize all that you are in physical form and then live as the master that you are here on earth, not master of any other, but master of your human experience. And all of you would say, from that level of mastery, you wish for greater love, greater peace, greater abundance, greater joy, freedom, harmony, well-being for all. And as each of you do this, you expand all that is possible. You are way showers of what's really possible as you elevate your consciousness and your awareness and raise your vibration and frequency to summon not only the energy but the truth of who you really are and who everyone else is too. 
Do you understand? Yes, I can understand you. Continuing on along the line, earlier you mentioned there are different levels of consciousness and we are happy to share if you'd like. I'd love to know for our audience the different levels of consciousness and what does it really mean to elevate consciousness or raise our vibration? Mm -hmm. Indeed. So we, we preference this with this is not a hierarchy. There is no judgment from our side ever where you find yourself in certain moments based on your consciousness. But your awareness of this will make it much easier for you. We refer to these dimensions of consciousness in a way that makes it simple for you to understand. So much of your life experience and much of your mass collective human family exists in a dimension of consciousness that we refer to as the third dimension. It is the dimension of separation. You are separate from one another. You are separate from God or spirit. You are separate from that which you want. If you are sick and you want health or healing, you are separate from it. If you are in lack or limitation, the money is somewhere out there separate from you. If you want a, a great love or, or a romantic partner or more community in your life, it's out there somewhere separate from you. In this level of consciousness where you perceive separation, there is lack, limitation, fear, struggle, suffering. And so when one has a near-death experience like you or the loss of a loved one, or a loss of a job or a business or money or a uh, disease where you have a highly emotional experience where you begin to ask the question, who am I really? Because all these things I thought I was have fallen away. And now you ask the question, this begins to move you into what we call the fourth dimension of transformation. The fourth dimension of transformation is where you can change your circumstances and conditions. You are not your circumstances and conditions like the third dimension would reflect to you. You can change them. Personal development, healing, all these different modalities and practices. You can transform yourself, your body, your relationships, your finances, your life. And most all of you have been in the fourth dimension of transformation for some time. And what you're really asking for now is to go beyond that fourth dimension of transformation into the fifth dimension of pure love, oneness, unity, God consciousness, heaven on earth, a new earth, paradise. That's the fifth dimension. But here's what's important for you to remember. The doorway out of the fourth dimension and into the fifth is to let go of all judgment. Judgment will always entangle you back into the fourth dimension of transformation because if you're judging yourself or others or humanity, you are instantly entangling with a belief that something needs to be changed or fixed. And then your attention and your awareness begin to go to that which is wrong and that which needs to be fixed. And most of the time that takes tremendous action, pushing, forcing, pushing against. And again, you will come back to the place of wanting to elevate yourself into that feeling of pure love, of oneness, of heaven on earth. But it is to let go of the judgment. It is the final step out of the fourth dimension. And most often it is the judgment of yourself such that each time something isn't quite right, you don't feel good, or something happens, you go, oh, what do I still need to work on? Oh, what do I still need to process? Oh, what do I still need to fix? And many people spend their whole lifetime until the moment that they take their last breath and they feel what it feels like to go beyond that judgment into pure love. But None of you have to wait to make your transition. You can all realize this state of consciousness here and now. In time, we will talk more about the six dimensions and higher. But that really is dimensions of consciousness beyond form, where you 
play and create in the formless. Right now, the opportunity for you is to step fully into that fifth dimension of pure love, where your well-being and abundance is assured, where you experience true creation. What you want and what you need shows up even before you know you need it. It just shows up and it's a yes. You never again entangle with the lack or limitation. You don't have to experience the lack of something or separation from something in order to create more abundance, more love, more joy, more harmony. And you do not focus on where you are not whole and complete. You come into absolute alignment to your infinite worth, your wholeness, your completeness, elevating yourself into the fifth dimension or heaven on earth. And from there, you get more and more and more of what you are. Freedom, well-being, abundance, joy, love. Does this make sense to you? Yes, thank you. So going along those lines, why do you say, and this, this comes out of Sarah's book, there is no need to make decisions about anything allow your decisions to be choiceless. Indeed. There's no reason to make a big decision about anything ever again once you have this awareness. Destiny, as you would call it, is essentially allowing things to be choiceless. You follow the energy, you let the light guide the way. What you want and what you need come before you know you need it. It's choiceless. So when you're trying to make a big decision, you are in the third dimension of separation. Lack, limitation, fear, separation. You have to make a big decision. You are lowering your consciousness and evoking a feeling of fear. I only have one choice. I only have one option or two options. You try to make some big decision where a divine orchestration or the energy of the light is not fully aligned or hasn't fully come together or what is being divinely orchestrated hasn't yet presented its perfection to you. So you try to make a big decision. You're trying to push and force energy where you think it should go, which will always lead you to resistance. When you are resisting anything at all, you are resisting everything. You may be in resistance about something to do with a relationship or something to do with your finances, but the resistance of anything is resisting all that is here for you. So then you try to make a big decision and it doesn't come together and things are delayed and things fall apart and it's difficult. And yet, if you would just allow things to be choiceless, even your expectations of time. I only have this much time to make a big decision. You are invoking lack and limitation. You are limiting your options. You, you are in resistance, which creates a much different experience of source energy. And so when you allow things to be choiceless, and you all really have had experiences of this at some point in your life. It was just choiceless, which means you were already doing it before you realized you made some choice. It was just choiceless. There was energy that just couldn't stop you. Whatever it was just lit up and you followed the light. And so it becomes this way of really getting to a place where you don't even want to try to figure it out anymore because you live in such alignment in such a level of consciousness where you are always summoning the energy that is moving into form for your highest and best good and it will just be choiceless just the awareness of this just feeling in your own body Am I trying to make a big decision and creating lack and limitation and separation and fear? Or are you standing in your power, present in the moment, and allowing it to be choiceless? Most of you do not believe you are worthy of slowing down and letting that which is choiceless 
come to you. As children, you were told, hurry up, we're going now. Put that on. No, you're not doing that. You don't have a choice. Let's go. And you didn't realize how many times you give your power away to time, to other people's expectations, to beliefs and limitation. And we're simply inviting you into the awareness that if you really come into the moment, because all of your power is in the now moment, what is choiceless will come to you. We say you are a force field of consciousness made up of particles of infinite creation that are always responding to you. Reality is moving through you as that force field of consciousness. Your destiny moves through you as a force field of consciousness. You can draw to you everything you need and more. But most of those things that are choiceless just show up. It is an experience of true creation. No delay, no lack, no limitation, no agenda. It just shows up and it's a yes. Do you understand? Yes, thank you. Along the lines of destiny. Do we each have a destiny and can we mess up our destiny? We'll give you an analogy. You're walking down Main Street and you're overwhelmed you're stressed out, your job is exhausting, uh, you're not getting along with your spouse, you're, you're frustrated and overwhelmed, your head's down, your shoulders are slumped, you're staring at the ground, but you're walking down Main Street. Or you have your head held high and light in your eyes and you feel vibrant and alive, excited about your life, doing the things that bring you joy, focused on what you love, you're still walking down Main Street. You have a choice. And it's a choice you make. Are you living in a world that is horrible and awful and there's suffering and struggle and you can't do what you want to do and you never have time for yourself and you can't do the things that you enjoy, you can't do the things that you love? Or you remember that you are a creator within your own creation. You elevate your awareness and your consciousness. You allow yourself to feel the energy that creates worlds, but most importantly, the energy that creates your worlds. And you live your life as a master in the realization of all that you are. Now, which do you choose? There's no judgment from our side ever. We come forth because we promised we would so that you would never forget who you really are and why you are here. You came into this life, every single one of you, no matter when you're listening to this, you are here for realization, to come into the absolute realization of who you are and then live fully and love fully and be all that you are in every moment. There is no judgment from our side. You cannot fail. You cannot miss out on your destiny, but you can hold yourself in an experience of suffering and struggle and lack and limitation and fear. Or you can allow yourself into the realization that you are worthy of all the love and the joy and the abundance and the freedom and the harmony that you desire to remember that you are everything you wish to be, you already are, and, that, and then live in that level of awareness and consciousness with an open heart shining brightly. And you may never say a word to someone you meet as you're walking down Main Street, but just your vibration and your frequency and the love in your heart as you look in their eyes and smile has the power to awaken them to, to the truth of who they are. There is not one of you that cannot walk into a room, no matter what is going on, 
and bring such a level of consciousness and peace through your vibration and your frequency and your presence that would not instantly awaken everyone in that room to the peace and the harmony that is available within them too. So no, you cannot miss out uh, or fail at this life experience. But there is a much more joyful, loving, harmonious way to walk this path if it is your choosing. We will expand a bit on realization. Realization is why you came. This is the time of the greatest transformation of human consciousness that will ever occur in any lifetime. And you chose to come forth at this time to first go through your own awakening and then come into the realization of all that you are to hold the vibration, the consciousness and the frequency for all of humanity to go through this great transformation of consciousness. And because of you, there is a more loving, harmonious, joyful path to awakening for all who are ready and all who are choosing. Those of you who are moving into realization, it is about your worthiness. The only thing that stands between you and everything you desire and the greatest version of you and you living your highest potential and purpose in this life is your belief in your own worthiness that you can do what you love and do the things that bring you joy and play and create and that you are worthy of that each and every day realization is the integration of every part of you to begin to celebrate every part of you to bring all of you into the wholeness and the completeness and the perfection of all that you are and then to live as the master that you are again if you are hearing us no matter who you are or when you hear this, you are a master. We say, you are us and we are you. You are the council here on earth during this greatest time of transformation, here to live as the realized master that you are. And as you do, you will serve in ways that you could never understand until the moment that you reemerge fully back into all that you are and you will understand how important it was every moment of joy every moment of peace every moment of happiness every moment that you allowed abundance and well-being and freedom and beauty to be your experience do you understand Yes, thank you. A few more questions, some of which you may have just answered. Who exactly is, you say that the council is us, we are the council. Who is exactly the council? What is the council's journey or evolution? And where did the council begin? Well, as we say, you are us and we are you. We are the ascended master self that you are focused in a higher frequency and a higher vibration of consciousness. And we come forth so that you remember, so that it is hmm, possible for you through your awareness and your consciousness to realize yourself while also in physical form. We are a collective, many of who you know and some who you don't. But even to explain what God is or source or the divine or the divine love and light that you are can never be fully comprehended by the human mind. We are a collective and we are source and we are you in a vibration and a frequency 
where all is known. Do you understand? Yes, thank you. In the other room, I have a beautiful bouncing, is that the right word? Bouncing baby girl. I do bounce her. So I guess we can go with bouncing baby girl. And so while I would love to hear a message for everyone, I'm a little biased. I would like to see if there is a message for us today or for baby Hana. Well, our message to all of you is the same. It is our original message. It is the message we will continue to give you. And every time you hear it, you will come into new levels of awareness of it. It is simple. It is simple, yet is the answer to every question you have. And it is the thing you never intended to forget. You are everything you wish to be. You already are. It is all within you, and it always has been. She is not here to right some wrongs from the past. She is not here to fix a broken world. She's not here to save the world, and neither are you. You did not come here to save or fix. You did not come here in search of some part or missing part of you that would return you to wholeness. You were whole, perfect, and complete. In the moment that you incarnated into this human experience, and you always have been, you are pure love. You are that which you call source, God, the divine, expressing yourself in human form. You are here for expansion. Every experience you have leads to that expansion. You are expanding the potentials and the possibilities for all of humankind. You are here to express all that you are, to do what you love, to do the things that bring you joy, to see the beauty and create beauty and express yourself fully in every moment knowing of your absolute worth and the unwavering love that is always here for you, guiding you, supporting you, protecting you, and most of all, the unwavering love that you are. And you are here to have the experiences that you wish to have for you. This is a grand adventure. Every experience you desire will lead you to even greater realization of all that you are. You're here to choose the experiences you want to have for you. And in doing so, you will positively contribute to even greater potentials and possibilities for all of humankind. You will help and you will serve and you will make a difference and you will create great change. But do it from your absolute wholeness, perfection, from the highest level of consciousness aligned to your worth and the unwavering love that you are by doing the things that bring you joy and that you love, fully expressing all that you are, allowing yourself to have the experiences that would be fun for you. That is why you're here. And there is no judgment from our side ever. We know who you are. And we know your absolute perfection. And we come forth to help you remember that absolute perfection and worthiness and unwavering love that is you. Woohoo! Thank you, thank you, thank you, Council. And now, I guess before I wrap things up, we'll go back to Sarah. So thank you, Council. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share their wisdom with you and the community. Um, I just, the love I feel uh, when they're coming through and they're just absolute, uh, as they said, unwavering love for you and, and for everyone is just um, such an amazing experience. So thank you. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. So we'll keep it soft and gentle here, and then we'll get roof for a meditation. Where can people go, Sarah, to find your work, to find your classes, your courses, your books, your channeling, your everything? 
Thank you for asking. Um, SarahLandon.com. You will find uh, many more re free resources there. Um, we've done many, many courses. I, I have some personal favorites, but they're all just amazing. So if you're looking through the different courses or meditations or channeled sessions we've done, just whatever draws you in, whatever lights up for you, uh, start there. Uh, we have a channeled MP3 program where people receive two channeled messages each month. And then one of the things I think I am most proud of is our master's class advanced program of hundreds and hundreds of, of way showers and people living this wisdom all over the world. Uh, and it has just been one of my greatest joys to create that. We do a live session every Wednesday, uh, two channeled live sessions a month where people can personally ask their questions to the council. And then one of the things that I feel is so important is to talk about how to live this. I many years ago saw a channel that said, something to the effect of, well, yes, it's this you know, amazing information, but I don't really live it. And you know, don't, it's, it's not possible to live it all the time. And something in me just, oh, I, it, it was an inspiration, but it was definitely a reaction that I experienced. And I went, no, like we have to talk about how to live this and how to integrate it. And so as part of our master's class community, I share and talk about how I live this wisdom in my everyday, very normal life, just like everyone else. And uh, so the master's class is something I'm really, really proud of. Uh, we have a book coming out with Hay House this year, uh, The Wisdom of the Council. You can pre-order that, Amazon, Hudson, Barnes & Noble. Um, we just have many, many amazing resources on our website. So I encourage people to go to sarahlandon.com. And as well, our YouTube channel is Sarah Landon Life. And there's many more videos and channel messages from the council. So thank you for letting me share that. Excellent, excellent. Excellent. And I'll put as many links down below for people watching the YouTube show as I possibly can. Uh, before I go and get Rue, any last words of wisdom you want to share with people today? Well, so as we're recording this live, I, I very recently got this inspiration to create a new channeled, uh, two hour channeled event, which will be live on June 30th uh, at 12 p.m. Pacific time, which you can find more information on my website. But the, the topic for that is freedom, the freedom to create the life you love. And I just have to say, no matter where you are in your life, no matter what you're going through, uh, I've experienced so many things on this journey. And I wanted to be able to look anybody in the eye and tell them the same thing the council told me many years ago. If you will just live this wisdom, you will live a life beyond your wildest dreams. You will live a life beyond what you can imagine. And I had some really big dreams for my life, but I truly do live a life beyond anything I could have imagined doing this work um, with, with what has been my desire to create. And I just want everyone to know you have absolutely the freedom and the power to create a life that you love living your purpose, living your truth, sharing your gifts. I could not have imagined the people that showed up on my path on this journey in divine, right, perfect time that just held my hand and walked me through the next step, angels and uh, mentors and, and all sorts of people. But I just, I, I promise everyone whatever the dream is in your heart, whatever life you want to create, it is absolutely possible for you. And um, I truly hope that the wisdom of the council supports you in every way possible to live a life that you love. Woohoo! Be before I go and get Rue, Spirit has been talking with me and they said, but wait a second, Michael, you forgot. You said you would ask before the end of the show how Sarah ended up on the show. And what that has to do with law of attraction and the or something better. So I've got to I've got to bring it full circle for people, or people are going to leave and go. He didn't actually ask the question. Well, I'm happy to share that. Before we started the interview, we were talking about how on this path. I, I think for many people, we have we met this concept of the law of attraction and manifestation, and and yet I knew there was something beyond that. I. I continually got this message in my automatic writing and from the council that 
there was this next evolution of true creation that's possible for us when we get out of that needing and wanting. And as they said, true creation is where it just comes, pure inspiration. It just shows up. And it's usually so much better than what you could have imagined or asked for for yourself. And and I think of some of the most pivotal moments of my life that just my life went to another level. It was not something I was sitting there trying to manifest. Something just showed up, my favorite quote, out of the blue on some ordinary day and changed my life forever. And that's true creation. So I'll tell the story. Uh, we recently created one of my favorite courses, which is called Grand Manifestations. It's about new levels of love, abundance, well-being, power, and creation. And in the midst of creating this, and I know exactly what day it was because it was a friend of mine's birthday. And I was at the gym, and a lot of times at the gym, I'll, I'll turn on something to listen to as I'm working out. And I had recently discovered your podcast. And I'm like, I love this Michael guy. Like I am standing there working out, smiling, listening to you, the energy, the love, the passion you have. And I said, I want to be on his podcast. Like that would be so fun. And so I just went about my day. didn't really think anything of it. Uh, a couple of weeks later, I was uh, talking to Mike Dooley, who's a mutual friend of Michael and I's, and you guys are doing a course coming up on automatic writing. And, um, and I thought, well, that would be really cool. I watched his interview with you. And I was like, yeah, I like this guy. I really want to be on his podcast. And a few days after that, I was telling someone about your podcast. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I get this email forwarded to me from my team, from um, Monique, who handles your bookings. And it's the invitation to be on your podcast. Less than a month from the moment I said, I want to be on your podcast. I I'm, I'm curious what the date was. Oh, I don't know. Well, the, the date was April 19th, the original date. And I think it was around May 19th or 20th that your team first connected to me. But I scrolled, well, that I first got the invitation. I scrolled down and the original email, which we hadn't received, it had gone, I believe, to a spam filter, was the exact same day that I said, I want to be, I want to do the, the podcast with Michael. It was the, so Michael said, was that an inspiration? Was that, you know, what is that? And my answer to that is that's true creation. I, it had already come into my space as already manifested in the same time period that the inspiration came. And I was like, oh, that's a yes. And I have endless, endless, endless examples of this in my own life and in our master's class community that people share. And there really is something so beyond uh, the law of attraction when you really come into this true creation. And I believe the council referenced it, getting to this point. And, and if anyone would have asked me, I was in the corporate world. I was a very type A. I had my three-year plan, my five-year plan. I had everything figured out, every I dotted, every T crossed. I now live in a place where I don't even want to try to figure it out because what is being divinely orchestrated is so beyond what I could ever think to ask for. It is about practicing what the council said of just getting into this place of allowing and knowing that you are worthy of it showing up in the most easy, effortless, harmonious, magical, joyful, amazing way. And my one tip, and this is the council's teaching, we hear this word allowing. I had someone in my master's class community say, you know, I struggle with allowing, but the word that I really love is welcoming. So if you don't know what allowing necessarily means or it doesn't resonate, use the word welcoming or welcome or receiving. In order to get into that state, and the council says that the instant manifestation of allowing is joy. So when you're doing the things that bring you joy, you're automatically in a state of allowing or receiving or welcoming focusing, just thinking about the things that bring you joy. I have asked this question, the council has asked this question to more people than I can count. The answer is almost always the same. When they say, when I say what brings you joy, and some people will first go, I don't know, or they haven't thought about in years what brings them joy. But when they really do think about it, animals, a baby, music, 
nature, a good book, the people they love. It's very simple. It's very simple. Joy is available to us every moment. One of the things that brings me joy, the sunshine on my face, nature, animals, all of these things are priceless and they're for you every moment. We definitely get to wrap this up and get to a meditation. But with that said, while I was talking to you before and while, here's how things go down. Hannah's development is way ahead of schedule. And so she's ready to go out in a, a, a stroller out on the trails right now. Nature, sunshine, animals. And so I, I get on Amazon yesterday and I'm looking through our baby registry and, and got the stroller that we had picked out, but it's not going to be available till at least next week. And I hear, wait a minute. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, wait a minute. All right, now go take another look. And suddenly on Amazon, it's available for a Friday delivery. And I go, okay, click. It'll be here Friday. It says the attachment will be here Thursday, but the stroller will be here Friday. Right before the show, FedEx pulls up at the door. With our Friday delivery on Thursday, and the attachment showed up during the interview. No try, no efforting, a feeling of joy, of this vision, of being in nature, of playing, of being connected, of being happy with baby Hana. Everything that you just described with no doingness at all. Just pure being and hello, it's here. I love that. Perfect. That to me is a grand manifestation. The more we acknowledge these things and share them and celebrate them and talk about them, that's what the council is talking about when they say seeding these potentials and possibilities. And it's in every area, relationships, finances, health, well-being. But it's, it is possible to live this way in this heaven on earth state of consciousness it really is. And I just can't echo enough the council's message of just knowing that you're worthy of that. Knowing that you're worthy of what you want and what you need. Showing up easily, effortlessly, perfect timing so that you can go out and enjoy the rest of your day with all the things you love the most. So let me go get Rue on that note and we'll do a beautiful meditation. And I'm wondering if you manifested a meditation. If you thought, well, I wonder if we'll do a meditation with Rue. But hold on, let me go grab him. I'll be right back. Wow, he's just magnificent. <laughs> Wow. Hi, Rue. He's watching. Hi, Rue. You're so beautiful. You're so magnificent. Hi. He likes your energy because he's melting now. I like his energy too. So beautiful. And this is really special because a uh, rooster, one of their two jobs is protection. So when there's a storm around, he wants to make sure his flock is in the coop and really safe. And so for him to melt like this, when there's a big storm outside that goes against all of his wiring. So that's really, really special, Sarah. Well, I think he can feel all the love that we have for him. So would you mind leading us in any meditation of your calling, of the council's calling, of the giant cheeseburger in the sky is calling. Mm, indeed. So just closing your eyes and taking three deep breaths to your own count. Breathing in and out. Feeling a little more peace and stillness with every breath. And then make your way from your head down into your heart. Taking some deep breaths as you focus on the area around your heart. Feeling the power and the stillness and the peace as you go into your heart. And now imagining 
the brightest, most beautiful light that you've ever seen beginning to shine brightly in this area around your heart. And as the light gets brighter and brighter, this light begins to shine in every cell of your body, all the way up from the top of your head, down to the bottom of your feet, and out your fingertips. You're illuminating every cell of your body to immerse itself in this bright, beautiful light. And now as you go back into your heart, feel the feeling of peace. What does peace feel like to you? And as you feel this peace in your heart, now align every cell of your body all the way up to the top of your head down to your feet and out your fingertips. Align every cell of your body to align with the vibration and the feeling of peace, such that every cell of your body is now aligned to the feeling of peace. And now imagine this light that you are going down through the bottom of your feet into the ground beneath you, into the earth beneath you, through the roots of the trees and the crusts of the earth, all the way down into the center of the earth. And as you come into the center of the earth, now an even brighter, more magnificent light begins to shine and expand up through the center of the earth, up through the crust of the earth and the roots of the trees, into the ground and the oceans and the earth, up through the bottoms of the ocean, up onto the shores, over the grass, through the rivers, into the trees. And this bright, beautiful light coming up through the center of the earth, through the bottom of the oceans, up into the ground beneath you, now makes its way to the sacred earth beneath each and every one in your beloved human family. The ground beneath all of humankind now fully illuminated in the light and that divine light now moving up from the bottoms of the feet into the hearts of all of humanity in this moment the divine light that is the truth of who you are and who they are too now begins to move up into the heart of all of humankind. That light expanding into every human, into their heart, now illuminating every cell of their body from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet and out their fingertips. And now see this bright, beautiful light aligning to the feeling and the vibration of peace, such that in this moment, all of humankind is aligned and feeling peace. And as you feel the light from your heart going out into the heart of all of humankind, feeling in this moment the knowing that you are a conduit of divine light and divine love here on earth. And now take all of that light and all of that love and bring it back into your body. Bring it back into your heart. Come once again back into this moment 
feeling the light in your heart, feeling the light shining in every cell of your body, feeling peace in your heart, feeling every cell of your body aligned to that vibration of peace. Take one more deep breath. And so it is. When you're ready, you can open your eyes, wiggle your fingers or your toes, hug your rooster. <laughs> we got that last one Thank covered. You. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Rue. That's his hug sound. He has vocalizations that mean different things. And you said, hug your rooster. That's, that's the sound he makes when we hug. <laughs> well. Very cool, Rue. Very, very cool. <laughs> this has been so beautiful, Sarah. This has been truly so beautiful. Well, it, it was a, a dream come true that just showed up and was an absolute perfect true creation. I'm so happy to be here with you and Rue and your amazing community. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. How does it get any better than this? So for everyone out there... <laughs> <laughs> for everyone out there this is michael sandler saying be well have fun get the wisdom of the council and begin plugging into your true greatest most magnificent version of yourself today and <laughs> shine bright Woohoo! awesome thank you if there's wow <laughs> <laughs> Can't make this stuff up. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. I think the gods have spoken. The council has spoken. The universe has spoken. Plug in with everything you've got, just as Sarah and the council suggested. Of course, get automatic writing as well. You can get our whole video-based program, live classes with me, automaticwriting.com, so that you can communicate with the council. You can communicate with the other side. You can communicate with your angels and guides and come become a mystic, which you were always meant to be. Join our school of mystics four Wednesdays a month at inspirenationuniversity.com. Be sure to subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of upcoming shows, YouTube premieres, live events with me. Here is a link to the next amazing show. Love you guys so, so much. Keep on shining bright. Woohoo! How does it get any better than this? Waiting for that lightning. <laughs>